Hi, and welcome back to the Mini Machine Shop. I'm Dave. Just wanted to give a little shop update in this video. Um, somebody emailed me, told me I had the flag backwards. I'm glad they did, so I flipped it over. It's now technically correctly mounted on the wall. Uh, there's two projects I've been working on. One is I'm trying to put a power feed on the mill for the X axis. So I made the plate and some stuff, and I've got some some video of it, so I'll eventually describe all that project. The other project that I'm doing is making an electronic edge finder because uh, all the ones that I've seen, are, you know, they're fixed and they'll break and then the ones with the little ball on the tip that moves are over a hundred dollars. So, and I'll give a nice long video on um, why um, why an electronic edge finder is a lot better than the other snap ones that I use. The, this regular pipe here. So, um, also, I'm just going to show, I got a, a new um, tool maker's vise, really nice, big guy. So, I'll show that in this video. Uh, not too much else going on. I think I wore out the wheel on my drill doctor. It's not sharpening anymore, so tomorrow I should be getting a new diamond wheel. What else is going on here? Um, that's about it, so let's just show a couple of random videos. Alright, there it is. Brand new tool maker's vice. But to give you an idea of the size of this guy, there you go. <laughs> it is small. Love it. I saw this guy on eBay. $20. I just had to have it. That thing is crazy. <laughs> Don't know what I'm going to put in it, but uh, I'll do some small work here. Okay. Just wanted to shoot a quick note. I had to make, um, wanted to make two more tool holders for the new 3 8 um, carbide set inserts that I showed in an earlier video. Before that shelf that's sitting there on the left and the one I'm cutting is beyond a half inch so I used to I only had a half inch cutter so I'd have to work twice as much make two passes the new three-quarter cutter does it in one pass and the surface is really nice and clean too there we in there well, I guess you can see that just wanted to fill you in alright I just thought I'd shoot this while I have this thing apart I was making a part and then all of a sudden the y-axis was just I couldn't move it, it was locking up. Take it all apart and the grease that was down in there just became gooey all of a sudden. So I'm not going to use grease anymore, I'm just going to use motor oil on it. But uh, since I had it apart, you can see the play, you can hear it clunking back and forth. The lead screw isn't moving, so the damage is on the nut, is what I'm guessing. I don't think the lead screw is worn out. But it's probably going to move like that no matter where I put it. Right? Yep. Actually, that seems like that's worse. A little further out. Yeah, same, same. So, um, luckily I had already, a long time ago, ordered a new lead screw and a nut. And what the nut is, real simple. This guy sits down in there like that behind this screw and that screw locks it in place. Likewise there's another nut that sits like this for the x-axis and there's two screws, set screws under here that hold this in place. So what I do is when they're loose I'll run this all the way down to the end so I know this center is pretty much so I've got this nut centered and then I'll tighten that up and I'll do the same thing with this axis I'll pull it all the way back so that nut is pretty much so centered with this center here and then I'll tighten that up this guy you can only access when you remove the rubber chip shield from here so I guess I'm going to take it apart again 
put the new nut in there and hopefully that gets rid of the play or the sloppiness that's in there. Alright, just thought I'd let you guys see it. Alright, playing around with it. The new nut is just as bad as this nut. So, um, trying to figure out where the play is for sure. So I put the test indicator down on the end of the lead screw. And I've got, I do have four thousandths worth of play. You know, lead screws moving back and forth. So, that means that it's in here. And I can probably, I'll probably take this apart and see what I can machine to take that out. But the nut was giving me, uh, I think it was almost ten thousandths worth of play between the two or whatever. So I figured, you know, what happens if I just tweak the nut, you know, bind it. So I started with a thousandth and it closed it up a bit, two thousand, a bit more. Three thousand. And now, I don't know if you can see the indicator. Uh, here comes the guard here. But I've got uh, one, two, that's three and a half. So I think all the play is gone from the nut and the lead screw, and it's now just in there. So I'm going to put this all back together. You can kind of see the other nut there. Oh, and to get this done, you got to run this all the way back so it comes off the, back off the rail here and jam that nut up against here before you tighten this down and before you tighten that nut down. Because then that's the only way to make sure it's absolutely centered. Alright, little update here. I was in the process of milling another uh, tool holder for the lathe when, I don't know, all of a sudden the Y axis was just jammed. I couldn't move it. So I had to take the whole thing apart. I mean, there were chips down in the middle. Uh, it turned out, like I said, to be grease that just got super stiff. So this is running on oil only. And the tilting of that nut with the shim got rid of all the play here. I can't move anything at all. I mean, the DROs are staying on zero, or zero. So that got rid of all the play that I used to have in the axis. Also, um, the black plastic rubber stuff, the chip things that they had there, I had replaced it once, and the new ones were cracking already. So this time, I raided my wife's drawer. She went to a thrift store and bought um, a leather skirt and cut it up for something she was doing. So this is now all leather here in the front and the back. And um, the way this was done before, uh, that the screws were underneath and it made it impossible for me to check the DRO mount because it just covered it up. You'd have to remove this. Now this back piece goes up like this and screws straight in. So it gives me more clearance and hopefully I know chips are going to be down in there because they were on the old one. I was hoping to do it the other way, but the leather won't stay put, so I'm probably going to have to do something here to just kind of clamp it a little bit more. But it's a lot wider, protects the DRO down there from chips getting in it, and hopefully it's going to do a better job of protecting things here. And I know leather's not going to give out, because you look at all the other machines, the big, larger end mills, they all use leather for their chip guard. So. All right, I've got rid of all the play. Everything is sweet back together. I can finish making my tool holder.